All right, guys, so big news, breaking news. We are so excited. The Canadian women's national team was just announced for the Tokyo Olympics 20, well, 2021, 2020. Okay, so excited. We're going to go through it, and then we'll give all of our opinions. I'm sure you guys have seen it already if you are Canadian women's soccer fans, um, but we're going to discuss a little bit. So we're going to start with all of the names they have a little twitter thing maybe we'll put it um as well so you guys can check that out but um okay we're gonna lift off list off the names and we'll chat about it so number one we have kaylin sheridan deanne rose julia grosso jade riviere evelyn vien uh vanessa gill stephanie labbe quinn janine becky Shalina Zadorsky, Adriana Leon, Michelle Prince, Jesse Fleming, Kadisha Buchanan, Christine St. Clair, Desiree Scott, Ashley Lawrence, and finally Alicia Chapman. And then the four alternates are goalkeeper Aaron McLeod, um, Gabrielle Carl, uh, Sophie Schmidt, and then finally Jordan Heidma. Wow. So a lot of the, I'm sure we can all agree, a lot of them we are like Shalina Zadorsky, Buchanan, uh, St. Clair, Lawrence, um, even like, who am I thinking? Like even the two goalkeepers, everybody anticipated that, Jesse Fleming, Quinn, um, Chapman, like, I don't know if I said that already. And then we were thinking Evelyn Vien would, would be a sure thing. Also Vanessa Gill, we thought would be a, we thought would be a sure thing those who are on the cusp i think we, we need to discuss on a cusp so jade riviere was on the cusp adriana leon was on the cusp um we had who else am i thinking of even like a deanne rose we we're like we we're like probably she'll be on um but even then she might have been on the cusp because she could have taken the spot for Jordan Heitma. You know, she could have been interchangeable with her potentially. And then finally, the big question mark for me was Julia Grosso. I don't think any, I don't think we even mentioned her name in the previous part we recorded. Um, and her name, like, I'm so surprised. Like, she's being taken above, like, a Sophie Schmidt, who I thought was, like, the tried and true go-to type of situations. What are your girls, uh, what are your guys' initial reactions to this? Yeah, I think the biggest question, first of all, shout out to Canada Soccer for doing, I love this down there where they did the name, the pronoun, age, where they grew up, first club slash active start. It was amazing to see that they included pronouns for, for Quinn in there um, and so many other players and, of course, gave a shout out to where they started, which I know on the men's side, a lot of clubs like like England's men's national team when they went to the Euros, they did that too. So I really like that Canada Soccer did that as well and, and made it really inclusive and, and kind of gave players where they started. So shout out to them. I think the biggest shock for me here is Sophie Schmidt um, being an alternate. I'm glad she's an alternate. I think... I think the last two exhibition games were probably some of the best that she showed. I think overall, in, in my opinion, of her as a player, I think she's had her moments, um, positive, negative, good games, bad games. But I think these last two have really showed. So I don't know, maybe she picked up a little injury in there. Maybe we, we won't know. But um, that was a huge, huge shock to me because of the vet experience in there. Maybe maybe something happened the last two games, but I think she showed well, and I'm very critical of a player like her because she's a vet and obviously has so much experience. So just a little bit um, wondering why on, on her especially. I think they hit the nail on the head with the rest. I think they've gotten it. Uh, Grosso and, and Schmidt, I, I maybe would have subbed out. So excited to see so many um, players in a, in a diverse roster in regards to vets and some players that... Um, are newer to the program as as well getting that start so I think it's a um, it's a it's a unique team and I'm just like looking at it as we talk here so sorry if I'm looking down but I don't know what yeah. formation you're going to play here and who's going to start and maybe we'll talk a little bit about that but that's just kind of my overall reaction once Julie sent over the um, link um, those were kind of my initial thoughts Alex yes yeah, so for me um 
big question mark for me is Jade Riviere. Um, I just oh, really? feel like versus like yeah, Carl, you mean? Carl. I just feel like if we're looking, because a lot of these decisions that I'm when I'm looking at this list were clearly made over the course of the most recent camp, and and a little bit of she believes, um, but mostly this past recent camp with Brazil and with Czech Republic and even the Wales England games probably have a little bit to play in this decision too. I feel like a lot of these decisions were the most recent that Bev had eyes on them is when she made these decisions. Um, and I just, I don't know, Jade Riviera just seems like she still needs some time before she's on that big stage. I felt like there were moments where she was not making tackles, letting the ball get past her. Um, just didn't seem to have the same confidence that I felt Carl had on the field. Um, but, you know, maybe that looks different in camp, but just the vibe watching through TV, I just felt that there was a sense, a different sense of confidence between the two of them. Um, but again, I'm not there, so who knows. Um, for the Julia uh, Grosso, uh, Sophie Schmidt, Desiree Scott, that whole midfield mix, if you look at what she's, what Bev's gone with, you have a Desiree Scott and you have a Sophie Schmidt that kind of bring the same element to the midfield. They're both tried and true. They're both staples of the Canadian national team, but they both kind of play the same role. They're both on the older end of the spectrum when it comes to the team. They're both that solid, strong, make a tackle, hold that sixth position, be the captain kind of voice in the midfield. And they both play the same role. Um, and if you look at what else we have, like you can tell that Canada soccer needs to change our attacking mindset and we need to be a bit more dynamic. And so we can't be loading up our midfield with those strong six type players that, that hold that spot and are a little bit more defensive minded. We need to have a bit more offensive minded midfielders. Um, you have Quinn, who's, you know, got that box to box kind of mentality. And you have Jesse Fleming, that's a lot more attacking in her approach to midfield. So you need someone that's going to, if you're going to pick four midfield, I feel like Bev had to pick a four that we're going to balance each other out and have a good balance of defensive and offensive minded midfielders to kind of complete that midfield. So I'm okay with the decision they made. Um, there was a few, you know, in that mix that we saw at camp that could have been that, that fourth attacking person that they came in. I don't know necessarily one that um, maybe showed more than the others, but I think Julia Grosso has the elements that they needed to complete that four in the midfield. Um, Sophie Schmidt, personally, I found when I was watching her at She Believes, she was a bit slow. Um, so if you're deciding between Sophie Schmidt and Desiree Scott, um, I felt like Bev was always drawn towards getting Desiree Scott on a bit more. Um, and Desiree Scott's personality, she's just a lot more outspoken. She's got a lot, she's just a bit more of that, that voice, that piece. And so if you're picking between the two, I don't know how, you know, sometimes you have amazing silent leaders and, and people that lead from be from behind and push people forward. And maybe that's, you know, that's Sophie Schmidt. But I just feel like Desiree has that voice and that experience to kind of be that, that holding person in the midfield for them if you're making that decision. Um, and then up top, I can't say that I'm surprised by Jordan Heidema. I mean, I said this earlier. I think that having her as an alternate is the right spot for her right now. Um, and I think the biggest thing for me in that front three, um, Adriana Leon, if you'd asked me, you know, three, four months ago, I probably would have said no, but after seeing her against Czech and Brazil, the work and like how hard she was pushing and just the energy she was bringing to the field, like you could see that she wanted to be on that roster. Like, she earned her spot. She was busting her ass and, like, made sure she was noticed when she was on the field. And you have so many people that say she's an off-the-bench, she's a 10-minute kind of player um, kind of thing. And she played full games and was, an, was noticeable on the pitch and was working hard. And I've had issues sometimes in the past of being like, come on, like, you're, you're almost the full package, Adriana, but, like, you got to get back more. You got to, you know, that sort of thing. You got to get connected with your other lines. And I felt like in these recent games, she was connected. She was making runs. She was making crosses. Um, and she, you could tell she wanted to be there. So I'm glad she got rewarded for the effort she put in because there was a noticeable difference this past camp from what I've seen in the past from her. 
Um, you can tell, like, and to your point, I felt like because she was coming from injury, there was a certain sense of, like, needing to prove herself even more so. She has been consistently, like, on during these friendlies, like, a part of the team in whatever capacity. And I think she's finally, like, I think I deserve this. And the fact that she's coming from an injury, I think there was a quote from Bev even stating that, like, she was surprised that she lasted as long as she did on the field. But again, I think it was a test, like too you know like how ready are you and stuff like that so good for her um i i've never been like i don't know her personally or anything like that but like i've never been like the biggest fan of her necessarily but like um if the work if she's busting her butt and like making moves on the team and making you know making an impact then like heck yeah like whatever works best for the team but i'm, I'm kind of sad for sure like jordan heidma too um, not making the roster. Uh, I'm just, I just feel she was always, like, she she got, like, the golden boot at so many of the CONCACAF, like, you know, uh, tournaments. She's so amazing in the air and stuff like that. To be honest, and I don't want to be, like, mean in any way, I felt like there's there was a certain sense of, like, and I'm sure this is not how she feels, but this is from a complete outsider. I don't know. Um, there's a certain sense of, like, complacency, like, where where she almost, like, feels like she deserves or... I don't know. I don't know what it looks like, but on the field, sometimes I feel like she's not giving her 110%, but at the same time, like, maybe that's just the way that she plays. I don't know. I don't know how it is. I'm just like, I feel like she could be like a little bit more impactful and maybe, maybe she's not at the top of her game right now, but I, I know that she's going to be impactful, like in the coming years for sure. She's still super young. She'd even go to university or anything. So like, I don't know. I know she has so many much room to grow. I just hope that she she's not gonna fall on the sidelines just like Mal Pugh has with the U.S. You know, like being really exciting as she was kind of growing up and and at the beginning stages and then she's kind of falling at this maybe status quo or, or whatever. I don't know. Anyways, those are just my... Yeah. And, and I don't know so much to her role, right, in her identity with the national program. I think before her role was kind of established, they were playing her in the air, they were trying to find her on there, and maybe it's the change in coaching staff that maybe, because obviously every coach comes in with their own ideas and own tactical information, and maybe it's just not using her as a utility player, maybe that role for her has changed. But I found she had an identity when she first came in, like you said, winning gold, golden boots, being that player that, wow, Jordan Heidema's on the field and always being that exciting player. And then it's kind of tailed off in it. And maybe it's something internally she's going through as a person, but it could be a coaching staff. Again, we're all outsiders kind of coming up with our own thoughts and opinions on this. But I just find her identity with the national program maybe be a little lost. And again, we've talked about the identity of the national program now with a new coach coming in. What's the identity? Can we establish an identity? And you could start to see it come out in those past two games, especially against Brazil, going from losing in the She Believes Cup to now tying. Um, so there's that identity starting to build. And again, at any national stage with getting a new coach, I'm sure sure it's tough. So it'll be interesting to see the identity come out and, you know, be not an alternate, I think, is the right spot for her. But maybe it's something we, we just don't know. But my kind of question to both of you is line up. Who plays, who doesn't? Because I know we've talked a lot about this and we covered it around, you know, vets versus new players and stuff like that. But who do you see prediction for the uh, starting 11? Um, who's going to get a little bit more minutes? I think back line is, is solid and you can kind of see it in, in there. But I just want to get both of your thoughts on who you think is our starting 11 um, going forward in, in the Olympics for Canada. Ashley, Shalina, Buchanan, or however they play. Um, Chappie on the left. Jesse Fleming, Des Scott in the mid as well as who's that third oh quinn three top wait how, how am i gonna do this no and then i want three and then i want two wide i'm thinking like it's like a janine becky on the wide and then like uh who do you think do you play J do you play jade on the wing oh like, do you play her as the other hmm. wing i'm just thinking like complimenting each other like Ash uh -huh. on the wing, if you don't put her with Becky on the same side, because Ash is going to bomb forward. So, like, someone that Ash can, like, overlap is what I'm thinking, because 
Ashley Lord's going to get forward, like, as a fullback. Like, she's up the pitch, down the pitch, in the center of the field. Like, honestly, if I was Bev, sorry to, like, go off topic. I've always wanted to say this. I would have Ashley Lawrence be a rover, like, just a free player on the field and just say, do your thing. Because she's so, like, creative. And I find sometimes she's restricted on what she does. But, yeah, I think you're right with Becky. But do you put someone else on that line that like, compliments so, Ash? So if you put Jade, like... Are you saying Jade is not as much of a dynamic, like she'll kind of be more like controlling central or something? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and she'll let Ash get forward, overlap her, she'll drop. I think they'll complement each other on, on that side because um, I think Jade's open to ideas because she's still so new to the program and still so young that Ash is kind of that vet to help her in you know her, her start. But I don't know. But... Um, yeah, and I don't know who you play in that midfield. And then up top, who do you think? I think the center, because there's going to be like a center. So it's going to be like that, like the nine. I think it's going to be like Sinky. And then I think Vieng is going to come in in the set, or vice versa. Like like Vieng might start and then might like switch in. Um, but like, yeah, I, like like I'm pretty sure who, how should I play I think like a like a Quinn or even like a Quinn and Dez might play like a defending mid and then like a Jesse Fleming might be on top and then I think there might it might be like a three but like a wide like 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 the that's why I'm thinking like the Janine Becky wide or even they can be like an Ashley Lawrence on the right and then they can kind of like like switch and like watch for that type of vibe but I don't know who's gonna be on the left like is that like a or like, and Becky could even be left, and then Leon. I'm thinking even like uh, like a prince can be on the right, and then a Sinky could yeah. be on the top. For me, I feel like yeah. the frustrating thing, like, I've liked when they've pushed, like you said, Maria, like, Ashley has so much to offer on different places of in the on the pitch, and it's nice that she can go between that midfield and fullback role, and she can, she can interchange between the two. And for me, I just haven't seen enough from Jade to to be com- like to be confident in her quite honestly like I felt like there was more success when when Carl was on and then they were pushing Ashley up into the midfield so I don't know if they're going to be able to do that necessarily I hope Jade's going to get to that big stage and it's going to click and she's going to like rise to the occasion because that would be an amazing moment for a young player um but I definitely see uh starting the game like the first game of the tournament you, you never know maybe maybe not but I feel like they're going to go with their their typical kind of lineup just kind of see how they do the more experienced lineup for that first game and just see how they do on the world like the big stage and then work players in differently but I definitely think it's going to be um I want to say it's going to be LeBay and Net. um you're going to have Lawrence um you're going to have Buchanan Shalina and on that left side Chappie for sure um I've found that Becky does the best on the left side um, so I like that kind of chappy Janine Becky thing on the left side going on. Um, in terms of someone that can maybe, I think having Adriana Leone on the right side where Ashley Lawrence can overlap her, you know, she's coming back from injury and she has been so amazing, but, but give her that opportunity to have a fullback that can switch with her if needed, um, and give her those moments that she might need. Um, cause if Bev's surprised she made it through, well then put give her a support system where they can interchange and, and she can have those moments to, to regroup and Ashley would welcome the opportunity to get forward, I think for sure. Um, and it would be really, really nice to see those two kind of combining down the, the right side with each other. Um, up top, I think Sinky's going to start, but I feel like over the course of the tournament, her minutes might not be... 90 90 90 back to back to back I think you're gonna have players that are gonna start coming in and, and taking over some of those minutes and I think it's needed um and you want to have Sinky available for for you know key moments and you know whether it's to kick the game off and get that that energy up or whether, whether it's to finish a game you know bring her in and, and turn around morale when it's needed I feel like she's going to be that person that's going to determine the energy of the team but might we might not use her all 90 minutes um midfield for me um Desiree's got to be the six uh Jesse Fleming's got to be the number 10 um and Quinn is a really great eight in my opinion um going you know back and forth box to box getting forward when she can with with Fleming but also being able to get back and be that defensive role with with Desiree and um Julia can get her into you can get her into that that 
8 or that 10 spot, depending on how it goes. However, Fleming seems to be lasting all game, whereas Quinn seems to be getting subbed out. So I feel like um, Julia is going to end up going into that spot with Quinn, just based on what I've seen for fitness and how long they've been able to last in the games. So that's yeah, my picks. And so speaking, I, I love that. Yeah, that's great. I um, I'd like to speak on the first games and who they're playing against. The one thing about the Olympics is that it's quite smaller. So there's like, because a lot of uh, teams or countries that should have made it due to the numbers, just the sheer numbers, they didn't make it. Um, and, but, but when you compare it to the FIFA Olympics, I, I don't remember, it's like 36 teams or something crazy. So they're expanding it to more teams. But again, we have to also know that the talent is going to be diluted or if you know what I mean, the Olympics, every single game is going to be a tough game. You're not going to see those, you know, 11, zero scores that you would see in FIFA. So, okay. So on July 21st, they are against the hosts, Japan, which will be a big freaking, like you start off with Japan, oof. Um, and then they face Chile uh, three days later, and then they round out, round out the group stage against Great Britain on July 27th. So Great Britain, uh, we had the Canadian team played against England um, where they lost was it two nothing I'm trying to remember the exact score I don't know if you ladies remember but they're gonna but Great Britain it's like 15 out of the 18 players or whatever is England squad so that'll be interesting to see how they do against them but when you get to the Olympics it's a whole other stage like you have the nerves you have you're not in your hometown you're not eating the same food that you're wanting to eat it's jet lag so much stuff goes into that so it'll be interesting I'm so excited. Again, I'm just going to be my Christmas morning, Christmas day, and I'm going to enjoy it. So, so guys, if you have any comments or thoughts, again, uh, let us know in the comments on our Instagram. We would love to chit chat um, with you guys. But yeah, otherwise, we're so excited for the Olympics to kick off. Um, I don't think the Canadian national team have any more friendlies before the Olympics. I know the U.S. women's national team have a couple in July. Um, I forget what teams they're playing against. Not sure if you ladies know. I'm forgetting, but so looking forward to it. Yeah, I think you you summed it up right. Um, it's going to be interesting with all the changes that Tokyo has done to let the Olympics go through this year. Um, and again, um, for just finishing off with the for Canada uh, playing, we just got to score goals. That's our our number one thing, and it, it's there. Yes. And I really worry about like someone like a sleeper like Chile with their with their goalie. Um, in, in goal, right. I mean, she's like the heart of the team and, you know, playing Great Britain with all those great players and obviously playing the host Japan, um, is, is not going to be easy. So it's a tough group. And like you said, there's going to be all, every game is going to be good. Um, so yeah, for Canada is just finding that consistent goal scorer and not just focusing on just one player scoring all the goals, um, make it a collective effort from, from everybody on, on the pitch. And just to touch on, actually, we spoke about Deanne Rose and how, ooh, maybe she'll use this opportunity to kind of announce where she's going. Um, no. So she still has, on the thing, she still has University of Florida Gators, which was her uh, university team, obviously. Um, and she's still not announced where she's going to play. So it makes me think that she's probably just going to, like wait until after the Olympics and now she's just going to train on her own or do whatever and then um, figure that out after. I, I, don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Keep you guys updated as usual. Yeah, I, they've got Canada's got a long, uh, tough road ahead of them to get out of the group stage. Um, none of those teams are to be taken lightly. They've all made it to the Olympics for a reason. And like Julie, like you were saying, I mean, it's going to be competitive. There's there's not the room for teams to be qualifying for the Olympics and to be having those 11 nothing matches. Um, and so I really I, I have my support in Bev. I feel like she's been doing good work to make sure she's getting looks and, and seeing 
um, seeing all these players and seeing what they have to offer. And she's really done a good job of cultivating an environment to bring in new energy, new players, um, new new abilities to the squad. So I'm going to put my faith in her and say, you know, she knows what she's doing. She was given that, that job for a reason. So I'm excited to see what comes of it and what this group can do for Canada soccer. Um, so yeah, so... Always open to hear people's comments, thoughts, all that kind of stuff as well. So send us messages. And thank you so much for for listening to what we have to say about this roster. 